Hi, everybody. Welcome back to What a Week. Here we are. Another week's gone by, John. I can't believe it. It. I feel like we're in Groundhog Day because <laughs> we sit and we do this every week, and every week it's the same thing. We're like, I can't believe how much stuff happened. And we say it feels like Groundhog Day it does. every week. Yeah, I think, yeah. Right? I All guess right, the, that's the nature of it, right? It just keeps happening. It is indeed. So we've got a few things to talk about this morning. Um, let's start with the government shutdown. Yep. I mean, this thing is dragging on now, and it looks like we're kind of no end in sight here. What do you think? Uh, no end in sight is right, although you watch, five minutes after we say this, you'll get the news bulletin <laughs> that's all over, although I doubt it. Yeah. Because you've got this perfect toxic storm of gridlock. On the one hand, you've got a president who I, it appears to be the worst deal maker in the history of deal making, or mm. at least one of. Um, who doesn't seem to understand that he's dealing with a co-equal branch of government, and he can't just stamp his foot and say, I want my wall, and nothing's going to happen until you give it to me. In the meantime, his poll numbers are cratering. Right. And, he, and so far, he doesn't seem to care. On the other hand, you've got Nancy Pelosi, who recognizes that she has an opportunity to really appeal to the Democratic base and make them happy by sticking it to President Trump and that she's got the leverage of public opinion behind her, at least for now, mm -hmm. and she's going to play that out to the max. So I don't see a whole lot of incentive on either side to wrap this up and compromise and move on to live another day. And until they have some incentive, I doubt you'll see anything happening. I think last week we were talking about Leader McConnell. Obviously, he's kind of yep. the key here is bringing something up in the Senate. Um, just want to get your take on this. A lot of people out there have been talking about, you know, once you see problems at the airports, when there's too many TSA workers not there, once people, everyday people, start seeing this impacting their lives and it becomes an inconvenience, that's when the pressure is going to be starting to put on the lawmakers. What do you think about that? That will definitely ratchet things up once you've got, you know, we're getting into King, we, uh, Dr. King birthday mm -hmm. weekend yep. coming up and then February vacations and people who show up for their uh, air travel and find that they're hopelessly caught in these endless lines, yeah, they're not going to be happy about it. Uh, you would think it wouldn't take that. And in fact, uh, the public opinion polls do indicate that people just don't like what they're seeing, mm -hmm. even if they haven't yet been inconvenienced by it. And listen, 800,000 federal workers spread out around the country. There's a lot of friends and relatives aware mm -hmm. of their plight who are also uh, already agitated about this. All right, another big story this week, obviously, um, the Russia investigation. It's nope. not going away um, this week. Talking a little bit about President Trump and keeping his uh, meetings with Putin and what happened in them secret. This is really bizarre and disturbing. There have been five face-to-face -face meetings between President Trump and President Putin. And uh, apparently, according to uh, uh, press accounts, uh, the details of what went on in those meetings have been very carefully shielded by the president even from his own people. Mm. This is highly unusual. This is not normally how it works. In one case, he ordered the interpreter who was present to give him their notes. Right. And the notes have not been shared with people who normally they would be shared with. So, you know, this just pours gasoline on the bonfire of suspicion about what is going on with that relationship. That's not going to go away. And another thing that happened this week, Chris, Rudy Giuliani, the president's lawyer, yep. comes out and gives an interview in which he says, wait a minute, wait a minute, we never said the campaign didn't collude with the Russians. We just said Mr. Trump himself never did. So this is an interesting new wrinkle, and often Giuliani's comments indicate that he's aware some information may be coming out in a court filing or whatever, mm -hmm. and he tries to get out ahead of that news. So buckle your seatbelt for next week, as if this week wasn't crazy enough. Yeah, the uh, news cycle just continues to roll on, and people yep. can't even remember what happened last week. We're exactly. always talking about something new. Uh, last thing, let's bring it back here locally uh, to Massachusetts and up on Beacon Hill. There's been another report of um, sexual misconduct up on the Hill, and obviously this one's a little bit muddier than some of the previous ones and a, a, a little bit tougher to deal with, I guess. Well, you may remember uh, just about a year ago, I believe, a great work by the Boston Globe disclosed uh, uh, patterns of sexual mm -hmm. harassment and uh, questionable responses to that by the leadership in the House. Well, now we have another story, again, great work by the Globe, 
uh, that uh, at a uh, orientation session for the newly elected legislators, uh, basically, as the Globe puts it, a uh, uh, a male representative came up behind an, a freshman female legislator and uh, put his hand on her backside. Not appropriate conduct under no. any circumstances, certainly not in a workplace. And uh, so uh, that apparently is being investigated uh, by authorities who've been, by, by a system that's been set up by the House to investigate these things. There's a second case involving an employee who was terminated by the House who had himself brought charges against another employee. Anyway, long story short, the Speaker of the House put out a long statement responding to the Globe that if you read it, Really, it lays out a blueprint of how complex and messy these whole these kinds of situations are. Yeah. Difficulty in establishing what the truth really is, and that matters. Of course, I would yeah. say as much as we might abhor sexual harassment, you don't want to see innocent people swept up in mm -hmm. some kind of, to borrow the president's favorite phrase, witch hunt. Right. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, we want there to be a system that works, that's honest, where an institution isn't just covering its backside, pardon the expression. Um, and anyway, it's worth reading the Globe story and the speaker's response just to get a feel for how difficult these are, and they're not going to get any easier going forward. Not on Beacon Hill, not in other workplaces e either. And it's a big, obviously, it's a huge topic of discussion right now all across the country. It's a huge problem. Yeah, it's a I big mean, problem. And, it's, and it's, it's starting to come to light that's good. How institutions deal with it is very, very important. But it, you're not going to see in every case the neat, quick, tidy resolution that many of us might like. Right. All right. So this is uh, one is other it the week, week down. Is it the weekend yet? <laughs> is it <laughs> 5 o'clock yet, if you know what I mean? Almost time. Somewhere John. it is. A <laughs> couple more hours of work, and then we'll be out. All right. Sounds good. Thanks so much for checking in with us this week. We'll see you next week for another What a Week.